Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Audible and they're giving away one free month linked in the description below. Audible has thousands of different titles to choose from and I use them to listen to all of my Star Wars audiobooks. There's a wide variety of different things that you can choose from, whether it's horror, action, adventure, or biographies, or podcasts, for example. Listening to Star Wars audiobooks on Audible is really like watching a movie, but without the picture. You get full voice acting, officially licensed music, and it makes you so immersed in the story. So for this free month on Audible, I would recommend that you listen to the audiobook Darth Plagueis by James Lucino. With Andor just having finished, I think the Plagueis novel is something that you'll really enjoy, especially those who are new to Star Wars. Now, this is a much older Legends novel, but it is by far my most favorite one of all the Star Wars books. It goes into a deep, rich backstory of a young Palpatine being seduced into the dark side by his master, Darth Plagueis. There's a lot of politics, there's a lot of the force, there's a lot of the dark side, and there's a lot of understanding of who Palpatine is as a person, as well as his very, very genius master. You can find all the links down in the description below, or you can go to audible.com slash Star Wars Theory, or you can text Star Wars Theory to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Star Wars Theory. Now on to today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. At the end of Andor, we got an end credit scene where we saw the many pieces of machinery that Cassian and the rest of the inmates in the secret prison were constructing day in and day out, basically until they died. What looked like an upgraded version of buzz droids constructing these pieces flipped over to create the massive dish of the Death Star. We finally got to see everything come into play. Now, before I elaborate on how Andor changes the fate of the galaxy and really slows Palpatine down, in kind of an interesting theory, I need to talk about the prison for a little bit. There obviously was something very weird going on with that prison that the Empire kept repeating everyone's sentences over and over again, moving them around to different floors in the prison until they died of old age. This was obviously to prevent them from telling anyone about what they were building when they got out, as well as to continue working and finishing everything the Empire needed for the Death Star. Now in the rare chance an engineer could figure out what this machine could be used for and perhaps tipping off a full investigation publicly or even worse, privately to be exposed, Palpatine just couldn't take the chance. So everyone there was ordered to die. Now it makes me wonder if all the officers there were ordered to die as well or if they were able to leave anytime they wanted or perhaps when their shift was up. Did they have ships at the prison that could leave world or were they just kind of stuck there and they had different Imperial ships drop off new personnel whenever someone's shift was up, maybe every month? Anyways, enough of the machines were made that we saw them being implemented into the Death Star that was almost fully operational. Now in Rogue One, which is about a few weeks before Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, we saw the destructive firepower of the battle station for the first time at Tarkin's orders on Jeddah. This means it'll take another while for the Death Star to be fully operational, and with the escape of the inmates of the prison, all the parts required are delayed. Now with the delay, this could very well be why Tarkin was ripping on Krennic for the constant setbacks as he took control of the battle station, which fueled the we stand here amidst my achievement, not yours line that Krennic expressively gave to Tarkin. I think Cassian and Kino Loy's prison escape put a massive damper on the Empire's plans and forced Palpatine to keep the Senate around just long enough so that the Rebel Alliance grew in power and size. If the Death Star had been ready even a moment earlier, Palpatine would have had total control over the galaxy by perhaps months or maybe even years ahead of time. Now the thing with the Death Star not being created early or let's say on time and it being late meant Palpatine had to continue to play nice with the galaxy. Nice meaning everything he was doing except for blowing up planets. Once he had the Death Star fully operational, the Senate was disbanded, they were dissolved because there was nothing they could say that would sway Palpatine with a vote or show of hands to denounce his way or his new rules to be implemented. The Death Star meant the death of democracy and the rise of Palpatine's Iron Fist. This is why it was so important to keep it a secret because if anyone knew what was going on and what the destructive firepower was of this battle station, Palpatine would be out of office very fast. 
Now, with this delay that Kino Loy and Cassian and everyone else at the jail cell, at the prison started, it means that even Luke Skywalker would have been sought out sooner by Obi-Wan if the Death Star was completed on time. And this means the Death Star plans might not have been leaked as early as they did in Rogue One. And even if they were, Jin Erso was younger, maybe not as capable. Maybe she wouldn't have met Cassian. Saw Guerrero was possibly not in the right place to take her in either. So many variables could have been altered if the Death Star was ready sooner, which Cassian put a stop to. Now, don't get me wrong, he did have a playing hand in the very machine that led to his and Jin's demise, as well as trillions of others. However, he slowed it down just enough to let the rebellion reach the height it needed so that Luke Skywalker could blow up the Death Star with the use of the Force, killing Tarkin and billions if not trillions of Imperial personnel aboard the battle station, leading to the Empire creating the second Death Star. Now here's a fun fact, did you know in Star Wars issue 14 that when Vader flew off, spinning from the explosion of the Death Star being pushed out into the depths of space, he ended up on a nearby random planet and had to fight these hyenax on a field. There's a fun little side quest done in issue 14 of Star Wars, and I've done a video on it about four or five years ago now. And keep in mind, the Death Star still has to mine kyber crystals, which means they need to go to Jeddah and get as many as they can. I love the idea of kyber crystals powering such a powerful weapon, which is the same crystal that obviously powers the lightsaber. With the new Star Wars canon, I wonder how come the laser shoots green as we know kyber crystals change color according to their user's abilities. Maybe that'll be explained. Maybe it's already explained and I just need to research it. Now, there is a bit of a controversy with the end credit scene that I must discuss, and that is the fact that the Death Star was built over Genosis. However, here it is clearly a different planet. Why is this? Well, it could be a mistake by the director, as we saw in Andor. There were many things that didn't really seem to Star Wars. For example, the blasters early on in the show in the first few episodes during the heist, as well as some screws and nails put into security cameras. Just didn't really feel too Star Wars-esque. And perhaps Tony Gilroy just forgot. Or maybe he intended to have it as a different planet, or intended to have these screws and such into security cameras. It is very possible. Maybe there's a reason for all of this. However, I don't think so. I think it's just an oversight. Now, my theory to explain this in world, regardless of it being an oversight or not, because that's obviously just kind of an unfun answer in the world of Star Wars. So to make it fun, my Star Wars theory is that the Death Star was just moving to a different place in a different part of the galaxy at this time. As we know, it can travel at hyperspace. So maybe they were just sneaking around and trying to keep everything hush-hush, because as I said, if anyone found out such a planet destroyer was being made, Palpatine would no longer be Emperor, and the galaxy would definitely remove him. So it was prudent that he kept this all a secret, and a secret it was kept quite well, I must say. Cassian didn't find out about the Death Star until Rogue One, and Mon Mothma is oblivious as ever to its existence as well. I mean, how could she not be? I wonder what Luthen will do when he finds out about the Death Star. This fight to bring down the Empire was done so out of the sheer dislike that they have for how the Empire has ruled the galaxy. Keep in mind, they don't even know about the Death Star yet, but once the Rebels do find out about it, for the first time, it'll be quite interesting to see them scramble and I'd love to see their reactions and how they're going to deal with everything. I think season two will be a much more engaging and hopefully more action-packed, faster season than season one. Season one built a lot of the story, and I think season two could deliver Krennic, Tarkin, K2SO, Actually, it's confirmed by Tony Gilroy that we'll see K2SO in Andor Season 2, as well as some other characters, maybe even some quote-unquote fan service characters, aka the main characters of Star Wars. I guess we shall wait and see, but when we do, we'll all see it together. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please leave a like on it if you did enjoy it, and let me know your thoughts down below about the end credit scene. Did you like this little piece? Did you feel it was kind of out of place? Give me your review. Let me know what you think. As always, be respectful to one another in the comments, regardless of each other's opinions. Check me out on Spotify for daily episodes, and I will see you all in the next episode on Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you, always.